In this lesson, we'll cover the Revit Structure 2015 user interface. The main part of Revit is basically the ribbon. Now, depending on the flavor of Revit that you have installed, you may see the same tabs on the ribbon as you see on my video, or you may see less. Going across from left to right, the first tab is Architecture. This is primarily used to create architectural elements, such as your walls, doors, windows, components, furniture, and other elements within the architectural and design trade. The next tab in is Structure. This is where we'll mostly focus for this course. Here we can make structural elements such as beams, walls, columns, and floors, and other elements too, such as slabs, shafts, openings, and a variety of other structural components for reinforcement. The next tab after that is Systems. This is primarily used for MEP, the Mechanical, Electrical, and Plumbing Systems, and you can see a variety of different tools covering those three areas. The next tab after that is Insert. This allows us to insert in various elements into our Revit project. For example, another Revit project, or an AutoCAD drawing, or a DXF file, or an image. This allows us to actually load those different elements in and be able to view those in different views. The next tab is Annotate. Annotate basically is all of the annotation that we would create within a view. That could be dimensions, it could be text, or it could be tags. The Analyze tab is next. This is basically where we can analyze our model, looking at various load conditions or load cases, looking at consistency checks, space and zone reports, even different types of energy analysis reports as well. Massing and Site is after that. This is more used for conceptual purposes, especially the elements on the left, where you can make a conceptual model and then eventually turn that conceptual model into floors, walls, columns, and other elements. There's also a landscaping component or area right in the middle for model site. This is where we can create topography, site elements such as trees or cars or parking lots. Collaborate is the tab after that. This is when we get into work sharing or collaboration. For example, you could have a master project or Revit file and you could have architects, designers, structural engineers, mechanical engineers, all working on their individual Revit projects, but that synchronizes to the master Revit central project. So they collaborate. And this is where we set all of that up and monitor it. The next tab is the view tab. This controls all of the visibility and view elements within the views that we look at through our Revit project. And that could be a floor plan view, it could be an elevation view, section view, or your 3D views. The tab after that is Manage. This basically is the managing of all of our settings, all of the controls for what you see from line weights to color to representation, even to the actual links of other files being represented in this Revit project. Now, if you have add-ins loaded, you'll have an add-ins tab as well. And this could be other elements, whether it's for the structural trade, mechanical, electrical, plumbing trade, or the architectural trade. But this is where your add-ins would be located. And the last tab is Modify. This is more of a general tab. It's your basic editing and functioning tab where you can move things, copy things, rotate, and do a variety of other elements like copy and paste or cut and paste. Now the area on the left is actually the property area and it displays the property of whatever you click. If you don't click anything, it displays the property of the view. So right now I didn't click anything or if you click in the white background, it states it's looking at the 3D view properties. And below that are all the properties of this 3D view. Below that is the project browser. This lists all of my views, whether it's structural plans, 3D views, elevations, sections, or your sheets. It also lists families and groups of elements that are currently loaded in this Revit project. Over on the right is the view cube. This allows me to rotate the model by freely dragging a corner, clicking on an edge, or clicking on a surface. The little house in the upper left will take you back to the default 3D view. All the way at the top in the upper left is a quick launch bar, where you can do things like open, save, undo, redo, look at text, go to the default 3D view, show just thin lines, or switch windows. On the bottom of your screen are your view controls, changing the level of detail, the visibility from shaded to let's say hidden line, 
turning shadows on and off, crop boxes, cropping the region, also temporarily hiding elements. And below that is actually part of the status bar in this one particular area where we see a little gear and a wrench icon. This is for work sets. This is going to come into play when we talk about collaboration. And lastly, up in the upper right is our help menu and also the ability to log into Autodesk 360. So as a review in this lesson, we looked at the Revit Structure 2015 user interface. We talked about the ribbon, the tabs of the ribbon, the elements of those tabs. We talked about the properties on the left, the project browser below the properties on the left, the view cube for rotating and viewing the model on the right, the quick launch bar in the upper left, view controls on the bottom of your screen, and the help menu in the sign-in to Autodesk 360 in the upper right.